I'm Joan Williams. I'm Distinguished Professor of Law, Hastings Foundation Chair and Director of the Center for Work-Life Law at University of California, Hastings College of the Law. In terms of my career and educational background, I went to Yale College, Harvard Law School, and I have an MA from MIT, and I've been a law professor for nearly 40 years. Work-Life Law, in conjunction with the Society of Women Engineers, launched a survey to measure implicit bias in engineering. The survey was sent out to engineers across the country, both through SWE and through other engineers' professional organizations, and we got over 3,000 respondents. The people who we invited to participate and who did participate were men as well as women and engineers of all types. So what we did in designing the survey is we started out from those patterns of bias that have been documented over and over and over again. And we simply asked engineers whether they experienced the, those kinds of bias in their workplaces. And then we compared the answers of women to white men and engineers of color to white men. We found um, strong reports um, of prove it again bias, both by women and engineers of color. 35% of the white male engineers who were surveyed reported that they felt like they had to prove themselves more so than their colleagues. But the number was much higher among women, 61%, and even higher among engineers of color, 68%. We also found the kinds of tightrope bias that's been documented over and over again in the lab. For example, when we asked women whether they thought they could behave assertively, about 50% said yes. That was about the same percentage for engineers of color, but white men were much higher. About two-thirds of them said that they felt free to behave assertively without pushback. Another tightrope pattern is that often women, the prescriptive stereotypes of women are that women should be modest and self-effacing and sort of help, helpful. And Consequently, women are face expectations much more so than men often to do what we call the office housework, to take notes at a meeting, to plan parties, that kind of thing. Women were um, roughly twice as likely to report that they expect faced expectations to do this kind of office housework as men. And also, both women and people of color reported less access to desirable assignments um, than did the white men that we surveyed. The maternal law is very simple. It is gender bias um, triggered by motherhood, and um, prior lab studies suggest that it's really strong, and we found that it was very, very um, pervasive. About 80% of the men who responded said that, they, um, that having children didn't change their colleagues' perceptions of their work commitment, but only 55% of the women did. So that was really a very dramatic gender gap. We also asked engineers about how, they, how fairly they felt they were treated in terms of hiring, promotions, networking opportunities, compensation, all of those kinds of workplace processes. And we found that women were more likely than men to say that they um, got paid less as compared to their colleagues, they reported getting less honest feedback, they reported fewer networking opportunities, that um, they were less likely to feel they'd been given the promotions that they deserved at, or that their performance evaluations were fair. And when you compared engineers of color to white men, you found um, many of the same thing. I think this data is powerful because although it's self-reports, now we have self-reports actually in the workplace that confirm what the 30, 40 years of lab studies have shown us. And it seems pretty clear when you have the conjunction of those two data sets that there is, there are some climate issues in engineering. There was a huge flood of women into the workforce from about 1975 to about 1995, but since then there's been a leveling off and there's been strikingly little progress 
in high-level jobs, and of course engineering are, is, is one, in traditionally male high-level jobs, there's been remarkably little progress of women into these jobs. And so the obvious question is why? And what this study suggests is that it, the climate in engineering is tougher for women and also for engineers of color often than it is for white men. And that's probably one of the reasons for the relatively low representation in top level jobs of those groups. One of the things that's striking about this survey is it was designed as a quantitative study, just as a survey, but as a standard and survey methodology, we just at the end left a little box saying, is there anything else you think we ought to know, just something to that effect. And we got this flood of comments, over almost a thousand comments. So about one out of every three people who filled out the survey um, left a comment. And so Consequently, it makes for a very rich report because you get a really, really fine-grained and concrete sense of people's workplace experiences.